Hi everyone, Tim once again with the Word of Life Church. Our address is 3342 Midway Street, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37921. That is the Word of Life Church. Our pastor there is Junior Mount, and as always, I want to give you an open invitation on behalf of Pastor Mount, the congregation, and myself. I'd uh, love to see you come out and be with us for service, if at all possible. Uh, if you're recently uh, uh, saved and you know young in the Lord and looking for a church, uh, come out and check us out. If uh, if it's not where you think you need to be and the Lord moves you elsewhere, uh, uh, we'll even point you in the direction to one of our other sister churches or one of the other churches we know of that that's doing God's will and preaching and teaching the Word of God. You know that that's the most important thing is that uh, you know if it's not for you, come out to. Uh, it's not where the Lord's going to put you to work. We want we want you to be where the Lord wants you to be, right? Uh, so uh, if you come out and it's not for you, then like I said, uh, just pray the Lord will send you and we'll pray with you that he sends you where he wants you to to work in the body. And what, as I've said many times before, it uh, you know he places you in the body uh, to do work for him uh, as it pleases him. So that's the most important thing, you know. It's not, as I've said many, many times, with us, it's not about another number on the board or more offering in the plate. That's not. That's not what it's about. Uh, everybody knows you got to have offering to, uh, to operate a church. If you want heating and air, you want lights and so on and so forth, and you know, water and all that good stuff. You know, uh, you know, you gotta <laughs> you gotta have an offering. But it's that's not what it's about. Uh, at least it's not that's it's not with us, and it's not with many other churches that I can name off right now. Uh, that I trust and trust the the pastors and the members and everything. Um, if you go to another church, have a church service on a different night, like uh, a midweek service, you have it on a uh, uh, a Tuesday or a Thursday. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go ahead before I say this. I'm going to go ahead and give you our service times. We have Sunday school at 10 a.m., worship service at 11 a.m., uh, evening service at 6 p.m., and we also have a midweek service Wednesday at 7 p.m. So um, that's what I was saying. Make plans to come out and be with us if at all possible. If you have church on the service on a different night during the week, and uh, you know we'd love to see you come out and visit with us, uh, not to pull you from your own church. No way, no how you stay where the Lord has placed you and to where he's placed you to work and support the pastor there and the congregation where you're at. Amen. Uh, if, you know, only you know between you and God what he wants you to do and where he wants you to go. Uh, we can we can pray for you, man, you know, all day long. <laughs> but it ultimately boils down to... Uh, you know where the Lord wants you and you know he will as I said earlier he'll place you in the body as it pleases him so uh, you know that would be our prayer for you as well so having said all that like I said you know uh, we'd like to see you, if at all possible uh, though, you know good Lord willing uh, but uh, you know his will be done uh, above all things above all things that the uh, you know that we think or say or do his will comes first he, as I've said many times he's first in your life or he's not in your life well, what do you mean by that well I've said that many times before you know if you place anything and we're all guilty of it at times uh, can I don't believe anybody out there can say that they've not been guilty of it at least once in, at least once in their lifetime that you place something of importance above God uh, and let me say this that doesn't work out too well because God doesn't play as the old saying goes second fiddle to anyone he is number one you put him first in your life put the worship of the Lord and his service uh, most of all you know praising him and thanking him for his salvation through the Lord Yeshua or the Lord Jesus same thing, same name. Those names, as I said before, means Jehovah is salvation. That's awesome, man. Uh, so words and God, the, the words in God's word, 
I mean things, and there's an I, I, you'd be you'd be amazed at some of the, the how it breaks down, especially some of the Old Testament word uh, the wording, uh, even stuff in uh, the genealogies in the Old Testament that everybody's like, oh. That's so laborious to read through those genealogies because it's just a bunch of names that are hard to pronounce and everything. It's in there for a reason. God put it there for a reason. And we're starting to understand and see more and more. See, I believe when God said that knowledge would increase to the uh, at, at toward the end of days um, exponentially, uh, I'm, I'm not quoting it verbatim, but you know, it's basically what he said. Uh, it's not just talking about technology and other things because there was stuff that was going on before the flood that we can't technologically wise and uh, other other things spiritually supernaturally uh, that we couldn't even imagine nowadays and I'd love to get into some of that but you know uh, <laughs> we got to go where God leads us right so but I think that's as I said part of it is the knowledge of God's Word and supporting stuff that, that's uh, or uh, you know things that support God's word and uh, uh, you know give it you know there's they they've let me just let me say it, it, the world denies this but you know the what they've proved God's word to be truth over and over and over again you know it, just just sit and think how well let's just say it <laughs> how stupid. The theory of evolution is, and it's still it's theory. It's not scientific fact. We people, you know, God created us in His own image. Amen. So we're to walk. I believe as He created us, we're to, if we're you know we're to be saved, and we are to walk as Christians to be Christ-like. Doesn't mean we're not going to have problems. Uh, so I was talking to my father earlier, actually, via text, uh, talking about, uh, you know, oppression and depression. And, uh, you know, I made the comment to him, and, and it's it's the truth it, every time. And you know, I've said this many times in videos before, right when I'm getting ready to do a video or even beforehand, even before I even think in my head, I'm going to do a video. There's oppressive and depressive spirits that come down and try to mash you down to where that uh, you don't even feel like it. You don't even want to do it. Uh, nothing's coming to your mind and it's like there's a block. But you have to, and this is part of the spiritual warfare. One thing I've been called in, and you know, I believe the Lord's given me an understanding of it. Uh, sometimes, though, in application, you have to you have to apply it, right? If you learn a trade or something and learn it, what good is it unless you apply and do the, the work and do that trade, amen? So it's the same way. It's the same way, like this. But anyway, we have to rebuke and bind those spirits in the name of Jesus. Bind them, cast them away. You know, it's, a, it's you know bound on earth, is bound in heaven, and you know, uh, God gives us the power to do that over these spirits. As I've said, spirits of many are spirits that do wide range of things. Uh, they're going to do much, more, much, much more on spiritual warfare before long. Uh, I really feel a drawing back to that again. And I know we did it kind of scattered over something. We might just start and just go through it. I mean, and take our time and not be in a hurry. Because you know, I don't want to be a hurt, especially when it, when it comes to spiritual warfare, especially now in this day and age. No, I don't want to be in a hurry. I want you guys and myself to be equipped by the things that's coming, and that's really that's rearing that <laughs> their ugly heads right now as we speak. So, uh, um, and I. I want to mention something, and it just come to my heart. I, I, I was doing this. I was making my hands in this symbol right here. Please do not take that uh, in, in the manner of symbolism that it represents. Okay, I, I, I don't. I didn't even realize I was doing that. I didn't mean anything. When you see, I, and I'm going to do it here. Okay, but, but you know, I, I bind it and I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. 
when you see this symbol right here people doing this finger and holding up the three fingers like that and you'll see a lot of pictures of politicians singers and actors doing that what what is that what does that look like triple six so see the symbolism that's one way that people communicate something they're telegraphing what they're doing so forgive me I didn't mean to do that I was just that, that was just the way I did my hands it was not meant to be that okay so please you guys out there that understand that and you know, a symbolism and all that that, that wasn't what I meant <laughs> trust me uh, in fact, I'll try to do it again. If I do it again, I'll smack my hand. How's that? Uh, try to remind myself. So anyway, let's go, uh, interestingly enough, to the book of Psalms. I've been in Psalms lately so much. I, I preached out of it. Uh, but the, my main main text out, out of Psalms uh, last Sunday night at the at our church at Word of Life. Uh, got the main text from that talking about, and I, and I can't remember the exact psalm that it was but uh <clears throat> talking about the lord uh, is going to judge the nation now of course back then he was talking about israel but he's going to judge the nations plural one day uh you know and the nations right now are so far from god uh and so by and so far into occultism and paganism and secular humanism and everything uh like I said, I think I mentioned a story. I was talking to the lady at the, our church that Sunday night that preached, and we was talking about it, and we were just, you know, you know, as everyone was shaking hands and leaving, you know, we were sharing things, you know, stuff that the Lord has had done for us and everything, and uh, you know, I'd made mention to her that you know, over especially in the over in Europe, there are a lot of churches like in a, you know, like, well, areas like London and you know, just areas over there, you had the big huge cathedrals and everything. Base here just tourist attractions anymore. Uh, many, many of them don't even, don't, don't even have uh, really any service in them. It's like they're basically the, the city owns them now, and they're just they're they're and they're huge. And they're beautiful. Uh, do we need anything like that to worship our Lord? No. <laughs> All we need is a room like that. I don't even know how the square footage is this room right here, but get two or three gathered in here right now, we could have church. In fact, I, I tell my wife, I said, every time I do a video, I have church. Because I'm, I'm in God's Word. Spirit is here. I'm here. So, you know, I'm having church. And the Lord's here. You know, it's so it's, and, and it's, it's wonderful to feel His presence because it's uplifting. It strengthens you. Uh, you know, the enemy fights. Always. But the Lord will give you victory. That is, if you take hold and grab it. Uh, see, that's where a lot of people are failing out. Is they're not pushing through. And that was one thing I preached about. And I know I mentioned this in my last video. I mentioned uh, in uh, my message Sunday night. I was talking about strongholds. Now, as we go, know in God's Word, before we get into the script, go ahead and turn to Psalm 149, and we're going to start at verse 1. Psalm 149 and verse 1. But anyway, talking to strongholds, and we know in the Bible there's natural and there's spiritual strongholds. So, uh, uh, just leaning at talking about the spiritual, I mentioned uh, at the very end of my message, you know, that I know there were some people there, felt it, and I, I'd even said I wish there was more people there here, but... We have lots, you know, a lot of sickness going on right now. You know, the enemy's attacking as always. So, pray for our sick people, and most of all, the backslidden, the unsaved, always. But uh, the strongholds that the enemy puts in your way in your life, and sometimes you can create your own strongholds as well. Uh, but I was saying, you know, there's people here that have strongholds in their life, and now's the time to break through them and grasp and get what the Lord has for you. The gift, the, the, the blessing that the Lord has for you if you just break through that stronghold of the enemy or that you put in place yourself that the enemy is exploiting, basically. So, uh, 
and thankfully we had a couple people that come up and prayed and I prayed that they prayed through and got the victory uh, and have moved the strongholds out of the way or pushed them down just as the walls of Jericho fell and uh, you know gotten what the Lord has for them amen so uh, may we all be able to do that if we have strongholds in our lives uh, you know we have to examine ourselves uh, daily really honestly we should daily examine ourselves to see if we be found in the faith arise each morning give glory to the Lord for the day that he's given us uh, <laughs> no matter what the weather is you guys know me I'm a sunshine and blue sky weather guy <laughs> uh, you know that's the, the cheerful days you know right now it's kind of gray and you know rainy and stuff like that and uh, not my favorite days but as a, as God's word says it's a day that the Lord's made so you know we're going to rejoice and uh, be glad in it as much as it lies within us amen so hoping this video finds you you'll be blessed uh, in the Lord uh, not because you listen to the video but but you did one when you watched the video you're already blessed in the Lord you purposed in your heart that day that uh, you're going to serve God that you're going to die to the flesh you've examined yourself you are in the faith you've got your armor on that you've never taken off you leave it on always you know my, what, what I say never take your armor off it's it's there for a reason in God's Word to protect you and it has all the areas and all the things that you need to protect you from the enemy uh, like the mind let's just use that for instance since we talk about oppression and depression depression sometimes it hits your mind now I know I know there's there's such a th especially if it's if it's a brain type of thing if there's a chemical problem or something like that uh, I, I, I understand that I believe that because uh, in these bodies we're going to have problems issues and you know as I've said many times before uh, so I think last in the last two videos I mentioned you know sin is the cause of all sorrows now I'm not saying you've got that problem I mean, because of the sin it may be of a past sin maybe because of drugs or alcohol or something you've caused some damage to yourself it's possible, but the Lord can restore you uh, but also you know now thank you Lord you know get to think about it does everyone remember those of you that know God's Word and uh, knows about brother Paul and some of the things that he went through when he talked about the thorn that he had in his flesh now people uh, still debate whether or not it was some kind of sickness or if it was an actual enemy that continued just to fight against Paul each and every time or could it have been both actually or one complimenting the other the enemy exploiting something in Paul's flesh a weakness you know who knows maybe Paul had a early what we would and that, that of course didn't talk about the word around back then about depression or something like that. maybe he suffered from something like that maybe that was his thorn in the flesh and maybe that's why the enemy come in to, and, and came in to exploit it we don't know is it possible yes very could it could, it could have been a different kind of illness or or it could have just been the enemy because it talks about it talks about the enemy sent to buffet him how he did or how the enemy did you know some people theorize you know I, I did and I, it, you know I can give my ideas all day long but you know if you know if it if it's if it's just my ideas my theory then I'm just one will say and that's why I said that I mean who knows maybe it was some kind of physical ailment that you know or spiritual uh, uh, fight you know a mental fight uh, something like that uh, but we all seems like 
we all, as the old saying goes, we all have our crosses to bear. Uh, and that can be, as I said, many different things, and it's different for each and every person. Uh, so, but the Lord is faithful and just. He, he'll help you. He'll strengthen you. Even though you might be going through something, uh, and there may be reasons why you're going through something, and the Lord showing you something, if nothing else, showing you how that you need to lean on Him for your every need. Uh, for our every need. Because He'll supply those needs according to His riches and glory. Amen. And uh, He's faithful and just to us. Uh, more so than <laughs> we are to him unfortunately a lot of times as I said earlier a lot of times we allow stuff to creep in kind of above him and we and we almost make him kind of put him in second well like I said he's not going to be second he needs to be number one in your life amen let's get into scripture uh, don't know how the scripture is going to go. How it's going to go. It may just be a teaching, maybe kind of a preaching. I, I don't know. It's whatever the Lord wants. So, uh, Psalm 149 and verse 1. And we guys, we kind of mentioned a little bit of this when we were talking. It says, Praise ye the Lord. That's how it starts out. It's how the, uh, uh, well, the Psalms, a lot of them started out because they were, it was songs, fit the music, you know. Uh, the harp and the psaltery and you know the uh, rest of the instruments back in that day they used uh, you know we still do that nowadays in our modern church that we have we but now there's a difference <laughs> okay there's a difference in uh, worshipful music and singing as or as opposed to a how should we say this a a rock concert type environment people say oh then roll that this if it brings people and they're and they're singing the message well you know i'll leave that between you and the lord okay if you feel okay excuse me for hitting the table here i keep bouncing it give give, give people a headache uh i so said i'll leave that between you and the lord uh some people that the only way to do that is you go to these uh, uh, if you go to a church and you worship, sing out of the hymnal, old red back hymnal, which we still use, and special singing songs that people have got. Uh, now, we have had our youth group in the past, uh, and I've even been to one actually, well, we did it kind of, kind of because we were uh, doing something for um, foster type children, uh, for Christian type foster. We, so we got, got into the, the concert for free basically because we were handing out these you know pamphlets with these different children for them to people to sponsor and everything like that uh, it wasn't uh, you know I, I can't condemn it uh, because you know the, the singing um, they're singing the gospel and uh, everything uh, but you know where's that fine line you know, you got to you got to really think about it. you got you, you really and truly, and it, it may be different for it. And, you know, sin is sin, okay. So I'm not arguing about that, but you got to you got to be careful, okay. You got to be careful what what you what you let go in here and what comes out here, amen. Or what goes in here and it's here and takes up root in your heart, right? Uh, that goes for us all. But we're to praise you, the Lord, however it is that you do that. Some people are more contemporary than others, and a lot of that, that, that work, and especially the old fashioned churches and the more traditional, that work contemporary, that, 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 that's a, that's a, oh, we'll stay away from that kind of thing. Uh, well, but the same ones are seen when they have special singing, special music. Uh, some of those songs, some of these people sing, these contemporary Christian artists. Uh, you just got to be careful, okay? You, you got to you, you, uh, to uh, examine it yourself, you know, uh, and see, you know, 
based upon yourself. And I, I'm not condemn. I'm uh, not condemning anybody if they do. If they, if hey, if they, if it's if there's no law, no no sin against it. Then if the, someone's praising the Lord and they're doing it wholeheartedly, you know, from their heart, then I can't say anything against it. Uh, not my place, you know. It's between them and the Lord. Now, there's some people that'll just say that all, all that's evil and you know, whatnot. Uh, it's whatever. It's you know, we're, 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 we each we're each going to be stand before the Lord ourselves and give an account of what we've done in this flesh while we've had this time down here. So, um, you know, praise you the Lord as much and however it lies within you. Whether it be by a testimony, a prayer, uh, your singing, uh, you know, as I said, our youth group, you know, uh, plays some of these songs and some of these contemporary songs that we hear on some of these radio stations, local radio stations and, some, you know, some national stations that are Christian songs and that do it to sign language. And I'm not making fun by doing that. That was just a hand gesture. <laughs> they do it by sign language. Uh, uh, sign the song basically while the music and the singer uh, is you know recorded and playing it uh, and it's it's a wonderful thing it it uh, now I now I'm a big fan of saying I'm as a preacher or as the pastor gets up there or as the singers get up there we're not cheerleaders okay we're not there to get you all riled up and get you excited and in the spirit you should be coming in the doors that way with a song of praise on your heart and on your lips, coming to his courts with thanks, or coming to his gates with thanksgiving into his courts with praise. Amen. That's what we're supposed to do. So we're not up there, the singers are not up there to get you all fired up. But it does raise the spirit up when these, especially when these young people get up there and start signing, signing to these songs. It is a blessing. And, uh, you know, people shout and, just you know, praising the Lord, and uh, it's just a wonderful thing, wonderful time. Uh, but see, when we do that, we praise the Lord. Some all the troubles of life just dissipate or become behind us, become secondary, and our mind and heart is fixed upon the Lord and His marvelous works, who He is, what He's done for us what he will do for us and I'm not talking about this stuff I'm talking about <laughs> upon our death if some here if myself should see death in this life we're going to open our eyes to life eternal amen uh, now you got to make sure <laughs> you got to make sure if you are in the faith if you are saved if you have accepted the Lord Yeshua the Lord Jesus as your personal savior and you've repented from your sins and you're walking in God's will all the days of your life now and that's not saying you're gonna have problems but you don't leave anything undone unsaid unforgiven you do something you repent you turn away from it that's what repentance is so praise ye the Lord amen it says sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints, uh, well, some people out there were like, "See, see, it says sing a new song. You can do this." Uh, there again, I'm not going to get into a debate. There's just some things I've mentioned before the Dietists don't debate anymore. Well, some people say, "Well, you're letting down then because you're supposed to be what they call an apologetic, you know, and defend the faith." No, I do defend the faith if it gets to a certain point, but there are certain issues and certain things that I don't debate anymore. You know, we're to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Let's get the first part right. That's grace through faith. You know, not of works, lest any man should boast. But we will have good works after we've become saved and walking in God's will. There's no question there. And I don't say, and you know me, you guys know me, I don't preach a doctrine where I say that you have a license to sin. Because God's word does not at all, one bit, no no passions no scripture gives you a license to go out and just do whatever you want to after you say or speak or recite the sinner's prayer you guys know when i say when you go up to pray for a person that's praying you know that's praying for salvation 
you, sure, you may have to sort of lead them along a little bit, but at one point, don't sit there and pull out a card and, and, and just say, okay, read this verbatim, and like there's just no spirit in it. You tell them the way, and a lot, a lot of times the Lord is showing them the way, but you share with them the way, what they, what they need to pray for, everything. You back off. You pray for them, but you back off and you let that time be between them and the Lord. Okay? Uh, I'm, I'm very particular about that. You know, lead a person to salvation. If they need to know how, I'll tell them, say this. But I'm not going to sit there and do it with a card and say, recite this prayer. Because a lot of people could say, oh, I, I said the sinner's prayer when I was 10 years old. Well, what have you done since then? Well, I got out of, you know, I, I stopped going to church, you know, as a teenager. And, you know, and it, you know before you know it, they're 40, 45, 50 years old or something like that. And, you know, I, you know I'm, I drink a little bit and, you know, I do this and do that. And, uh, you know, I've, I've done this and done that. Well, <laughs> something went wrong somewhere. Because, <laughs> you know, I now sometimes, especially if you're young and you get saved, Something will happen, and you know when you hit, especially when you hit your teenager. Everybody remembers your teenagers. You know it's kind of, <laughs> you know, tumultuous, basically, in their turmoil. Uh, some people get out of God's will, but if that happens. People get back as quickly as you can, because you never know when that last breath is going to come out of your body. Uh, you know, some things you you can hasten your your departure out of this world by the things you do, by the things you get into, whether it be drugs or alcohol or whatever. You know what, whatever. So you can hasten your departure out of this life. It's only by the mercies of God that He allows us and gives us the time to repent and of course though in the god's word does say there's a time for each and everything and it goes through your list of you know time for this a time for that you know time for life time for death and all, the whole you know basically you could probably break that every bit of that down to your entire life honestly so at any rate, let's just say this. If you saved and you've gotten out of God's will, hasten back. Get back as quickly as possible. The Lord's calling you back. He never left you. He's still where you left you left him. You just need to go back and gain forgiveness and get back in his will before it's everlasting too late. Because if you don't, then you're going to be, and you're going, you're going on it right now, and and you will end up on that broad way that leads to everlasting destruction and death. So don't be on that way. That's why I'm a big fan of saying not leading people through just a carded sinner's prayer. You tell them from your heart and your soul the way to salvation and repentance. And then you let them talk to God. Let that conversation, that prayer between them and God get up and there'll be a new person, a new creature, a new creation in Christ, right? And they will have a new song. Now before they'll have all kinds of other music and everything and you know, uh, man alive, there's just so much, uh, I've heard so much <laughs> Uh, some music. I mean, my it, it is like it's like it should just it should just read on the label or something, and, and even in fine print, you know, beware. This is satanic music. So <laughs> uh, stuff I've heard, especially from people like when I used to work with some would have some that was oh my goodness. Oh, and that's not even talking about what's so-called rap music, which is like every other word is a curse word, and it's just foul, and uh, that uh, don't get me started on any of that stuff. But uh, you know, you can't help a lot of times what you what you hear, right? 
you know you're out you're, you're parked and somebody pulls up beside you and the 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 stereo was thumping so loud it's it's making your chest can you know move and everything that their speakers are so loud you know it's going to be death by the time they're 40 if they're if they're 20 years old but uh, anyway not, i'm not just not not picking on them not picking on youth <laughs> at all uh because uh, we all had our transgressions we all come up different and like I said a lot of times in our youth uh, I, and I praise the Lord if someone in their youth has gotten saved and has continued on into adulthood and never got out and never had to do or did any of this stuff I thank the Lord for it I, I wasn't one of those I got out I had to come back to him ask for forgiveness and to be welcomed back into the kingdom of God if you do something sinful you have to repent you want your sins I say how many times have I said this you want to send your sins up before you and not have them trailing behind you because they will stand in judgment against you on that day so let's sing the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of the saints verse 2 and he's talking to Israel on this one let Israel rejoice in him that made him let the children of Zion be joyful in their king God's not finished dealing with his chosen people Israel I don't believe I don't preach replacement theology you guys know that the church has not replaced Israel as God's chosen people sure he is dealing with the church right now and to a minor extent Israel and they were blind in part so that we the Gentiles could come in to the kingdom of God but at one point when we're out of here he's really going to deal with Israel and they're going to come to recognize the Lord Yeshua or Jesus as the uh, Mashiach the Messiah they're going to recognize him finally uh, you know they're there's <laughs> to, to 2017 years ago he came and they're and they're not and they're still looking but you know what they're just like all these other nations when you think of Israel you think of a you know, kind of oh you know that's you know that's Israel that's you know but you know what that the, they're just like every other nation even have uh, uh, sodomy parades you know you know uh, uh, gay pride basically parades and everything yeah they have it over there uh, I remember the first time I seen I saw that it's like you know in Israel it showed them and it showed you know the rainbow flag you know that aggravates me that won't get into that you know waving that rainbow flag you know having a gay pride parade right over in Israel God's chosen people his his land where the Lord Yeshua walked, you know, God in the flesh, two thousand some two thousand seventeen years ago. But that's the world now. Falling away from God, we need to be as I preached and taught last time in in the message of the night. To say, we the remnant church, those that are serving God, His Word right down the middle right straight straight as an arrow that remnant church we need to stand up once again not be afraid of the enemy not get beat down by him not worry about our tax exempt status because the Lord can bless if it gets taken away because we've still got to preach against sin you know and here, sometimes if a, if a sodomite couple comes in your church and you preach against it they're just looking to do a lawsuit they're actively doing this stuff to try to force changes and get people into trouble and if they get preached on and get a lawsuit or something and get our tax exempt status taken away from us well so be it Lord can provide right he's at the, by faith he can provide what time comes and we got to pay the taxes on the land well we, you know and pay for stuff and everything pay tax well fine Lord provide but we're not going to condone sin anybody that comes in there like that or any any kind of shape any kind of sin God's Word we're going to preach against I know I am I know our pastor is I know other churches that will and other pastors that will we're not going to give in we're not going to preach that sin is okay nowadays it's okay because you're more or less going to sin even in your mind every day well you can't help a lot of things that come in your mind I understand that but you know what there's a, a 
a difference between you know a, the, a, a sin like that and a willful sin. So, you know, I, I you know I'm uh, whatever that sin. I'm not even, even going to name one. Whatever sin you want to put in that place. But let me tell you something. God's word, and I won't. I don't back down from this. God's word tells us, as I've said, I don't know how much. Strive, press in, pressing. It's a pressing way. Strive for the perfecting of the saints. Press in because we got to press because the enemy is what pressing back against us, trying to push us out and push us out away from God and out of the kingdom of God try to get you to sin try to do something to where you'll commit some type of sin and not just saying the one not just talking about the one of me like I said it's one one of the many tricks of the devil is hey focus on me don't focus on all these demonic spirits and seducing spirits and these things that do all these other things and these fallen angels and everything just concentrate on me talk about me Because, you know, he likes to be talked about. But that's one trick right there that people don't think about. Everybody's focused on him, and it's the devil did this, devil does that, he does that. But you got to understand, we've got more enemies that we face than just Satan, okay? I've, you guys know, I've, I've taught that and preached that, so you guys, hopefully you understand that. You know, read the book, you know, New Testament. Book of Ephesians, chapter six, talks about that in other places as well. You know, principalities and powers, and thrones and dominions, and uh, you know, just it, it shock and amaze you when you get into some of this stuff and learn some of this stuff. Wow! And then I'm not saying that I I have super, you know, super special Solomon type knowledge thing. No, it's all there. It's all there for you. You just got to read it, study it, get ask God for wisdom the spiritual knowledge and the understanding of what you're reading what you're studying see that's key so let's look on verse 3 let them praise his name in the dance let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and the harp for the Lord taketh pleasure in his people let me get my mouse over here scroll down he will beautify the meek with salvation hallelujah thank the Lord that he <laughs> thank God that he made the way for all men to come to salvation you know as I talked about earlier mentioned Israel was blind in part blinded in part but because of bringing the Gentiles in remember at one point Paul got aggravated with the Jews <laughs> he's you know paraphrasing but you know he's basically saying you know you, okay you guys you still do with, deal with the Jews you know Peter and the rest of them and everything said from henceforth I'm going to the Gentiles I'm taking the gospel to the Gentiles see it was God's plan all along it's to include all of mankind in the gift of salvation so let the saints, verse 5, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Oh, and I like this right here. Verse 6, let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. What's the word of God? What's it say about it? It's a sword of the spirit, right? Sharper than any two-edged sword, right? It can cut the enemy going in going out I still believe to this day people I heard people teach otherwise I still believe when we're talking about this or you know especially back then especially when Paul was talking about the spiritual armor he was because because him being a Roman and seeing the Roman centurions and see how they were clad in their armor and everything that's what he used as an example you know helm of the salvation shield of faith you know and you know the sword being you know what they called a gladius you know and it was a, a pretty uh, pretty effective weapon kind of a short sword had a spear point and was double-edged so it would cut in going in and coming out 
chop with it or stab in going out with it. Very effective weapon. <laughs> so therefore, God's word is that way too. We cut the enemy asunder. Cut him in half. Stick it in, cut, cuts going in, and cuts coming right back out. That's how we defeat the enemy. The sword of the spirit. That's our offensive weapon in the armor of God that he gives us. That Remember, you keep on at all times. You never take it off. See, I just can't understand people that talk about that. Oh, people, I hope you put on your spiritual armor first thing this morning. No, I hope you wear it 24-7. Have it over, you know, especially when you're sleeping because let me tell you something. I know God protects you to a certain extent, but you are you are sometimes vulnerable, especially when we're talking about in, I'm not being metaphysical here or anything, but we're talking about in the, the dream state, the dream world, because you're going to be attacked. You know why? Because I have been been attacked in my sleep before by demonic entities and everything and have woken up to it and seen things and de have to dealt with deal with things spiritually of course you know it's not something that I pick up a gun and you know say you know get out of here it's not it's it, it, the weapons are warfare are not carnal right now, as I said the other night to someone, you know, sometimes we have to deal with a, a flesh, fleshly deal, because the spirit is working through that flesh. Now that's where we have to deal with sometimes flesh, but we're not, it says we're not, you know, flesh and blood. We don't war against the flesh and blood. We have to deal with it because the spirit operates through it. But that's not the, the focus, but we're focused on the spirit that is operating through it that we have to fight against. And sometimes... As I talk about being attacked, sometimes it's not through flesh, to an actual spiritual attack. Uh, how did it come? Uh, a multitude, a multitude of different ways that can come. Something we'll get into in the spirit when, when we do these uh, spiritual warfare series. Verse 7 it says, To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. <laughs> well, you know, we don't do that today. I, I believe in the rule of law. I mean, we you know we have laws and, and you know abide by them and stuff like that. And if you commit, a, a, you know, a murder, then you need to be punished for it. Uh, some people to, to this day, when people talk about punishment and some of the things uh, that people do, I, my, I used to when I talked to my father-in-law, uh, he he would uh, and he was serious about it. Before he passed away, you know, many times I've talked to him about people breaking laws and everything. He would always say, "You know what? We should bring back, bring back uh, uh, the gallows and right in the right in the smack dab middle, 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 <laughs> middle of the city, and hang people and televise it and show them saying this is the penalty if you commit murder or whatever or something like that and." bring that back and show it and see see how quick the crime level drops and people understand that that the, you know that their end is going to be you know they're not going to be sitting on death row for 20 years or 30 years or something like that before you know so <laughs> uh, was he right by saying that well it probably would deter a lot of things that go on a lot of things that people do uh, especially when it comes to a uh, a child deal, something like that. Uh, I think that uh, that touches a lot, and I'll share a little bit of a testimony here. Uh, you know, I don't know if I've ever mentioned. I probably have that I, I used to. Uh, I worked as a correctional officer in jail. Now let me tell you something. There were some hardened criminals, murderers, drug runners in there. I mean, you know, very. I mean, hardcore criminals. But let me tell you something, they, what they hated even worse, if somebody came in there that was guilty of, of, of some kind of a crime against a child, they themselves would take care of it. If somebody like that got put in their cell, that person was in trouble. And we're talking about people that murdered other people and, you know, was, 
you know, except of hard, federal, hard and federal, you know, international criminals. But yet, they hated, despised somebody that did something against a child. But you know what? Well, I do too. Does that make me want to take punishment and vengeance in my own hands? You know something? I could admit to you that sometimes it would. And I have to say that per everybody that, uh, that listens to this could say to a certain extent if somebody did something against a child, imagine especially if it was your child that somebody did something to, especially something ritual, ritualistic, which goes on, by the way. You guys know what I've taught and preached, and if you've done any research at all, you know that this stuff happens. If it was your child or something like that, then you would understand it's a little bit different when you hear about a child, say, out in the Midwest that something's happened to him or something like that, a little bit different. But when it's your child or it's some hit close to home, then see how you see how you feel then. Right now, it may be okay to say, oh, no, I, I would never think about taking pun punishment or vengeance in my own hands. But something happened to your own child, and let's see how you feel at that point. I'll hazard to guess. Now, maybe in the long run, you wouldn't do it. The Lord's Spirit would rein you in. But at one point in your mind, you would think it. I guarantee you would. That's part of the flesh. That's part of being a parent. You know. And but I, I'm not a parent, but yet I would still <laughs> and I and I have, I'll be honest with you, I have where I thought, like, you know something. I would love to take punishment in my own hands on some of these people that do stuff like that. Uh, I, I, you know, sometimes even just m m being a murderer or serial killer, but especially when it comes to a child. But back in the biblical days, yeah, they were to take vengeance. You know, at one point, and, and there were reasons for this, won't get into now, the Lord said, clean out these lands. You know, he gave them Canaan, he gave them the promised land, you know, drive the giants out of there, and all the other stuff that was in there that we're going to now. Uh, but also, there, there were some, and there were reasons for this. You know, he said, kill every, everything in, in the land, everybody in the land, and even every animal in the land. Reasons for that. Some of you won't believe it if I tell you right now, but I'm going to have to bring it out. Because, for one thing, I think, <laughs> I, I, for one thing, I'm tired of holding back, and I'm just going to, push it out there you know I feel like the Lord is easing up and saying okay well you know you have opened up certain things so now you might as well just go all the way you know my views might drop down to zero I might say he's crazy but I'm still gonna put it out there you know God's will be done so at any rate honestly and true we're not to execute vengeance because you know it's a vengeance it's not ours to, to to exact upon someone. It's the Lord's. And punishment's upon the people. Now, you know, except we do have, we live by laws and we're to respect those laws uh, to a point. What do you mean to a point? Meaning if it goes, we're to respect it up to the point until it crosses the laws of God. If it crosses that, then well, I can't abide by it. You know, if one day a mandate is said that every house of worship must recognize sodomy and not to preach on it, not to speak on it, well, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to anyway. May shut us down. It's fine. Just meet in people's houses and have church. Doesn't matter where you have it. Because we're the church, right? be it setting up some folding chairs in someone's basement uh, in their living room uh, you know hey I, I, I talked about recently I'm getting to be a big fan once again of the house church and a lot of people are doing that they are coming out of these so called churches that have let everything of the world inside of them other than the word of God and as I said, it's got Ichabod written above the door, meaning the Spirit of the Lord has departed from this place. Probably be a, a shocker to really know just how many of those 
even in your own city, is that way. But there's people coming out in droves. Now, I hate it because there's people coming that's falling away that said, I'll never come to go to church or worship God or do any of that again because it's all just a bunch of hypocrites and they just backslide and they get back into sin again. That's not what I want to see. I want to see them if they if they, if the church they're going to is like this. I want to see them get out and actually get into somewhere, even if it be a home fellowship. That's preaching and teaching the true word of God still and living by it, being a true Christian. Thank the Lord that we have a church. That a per, just personally speaking, right now, we still have a church. A building to meet and a congregation and a pastor and people that love God, love the Word of God, that live by the Word of God, preach and teach the Word of God, and sing about the Word of God, and they're still living it. But if something were to happen, and the, the pastorship changed and someone else come in that brought a different doctrine other than what God's Word said, for one thing, I'll have to come up being a deacon of the church. For one reason, he comes up. Well now, God's word says this. Why are you saying this? Doesn't listen to you and do it, then I would have to find somewhere else. I would have to come out. Come out from among them and be you separate, thus saith the Lord. And a lot of times you are going to stick out like a sore thumb. That's fine. <laughs> Let the world know. Let the world know that you even even know that there may be a hundred around you and you're the only one let them let the world know and let the enemy know that you still are going to serve God in the beauty of holiness and that you are going to strive for the perfecting of the saints you're going to walk in victory walk in salvation and that you're going to make heaven your home in the end so let me ask you right now people out there that's listening to this how are you serving God right now is everything okay between you and God right now? Has any strongholds been put up between you and God that you need to cast down, push down, and reach and grab the blessing of God? Or does God need to refill you, replenish you, restore you, renew you? Have you ever, ever ever been saved? If you just happened upon this and listened to it, have you ever been saved? Ask the Lord to forgive you for your sins, to come in your heart and repent from the sins, past and present, and ask the Lord for forgiveness, to take up a boat in your heart, and that you'll serve Him, and that you desire to serve Him the remainder of your days. And the rest of what you pray between you and the Lord is between you and the Lord you ask for forgiveness and repent from what you've done that you want to be saved you want the Lord Jesus to come into your heart take up abode and forevermore stay in your heart and you serve the Lord that should be it that <laughs> should be honest with all of our prayers daily right starting out that way <laughs> especially if you've never been saved that, that right there is what I'm talking about leading someone to Christ in between the like I said after that let them talk between them and the Lord amen amen are you glad to be saved I'm excited and glad and pl and, and, and happy and joyful yes we may have depression oppression may have sickness may have this may have this on us you know that's the world we've got to be in it but we don't have to we don't have to be part of it, take part in it, of the sins of men and the sins of the world. As I said, we can be separate. We can be apart from it and serve God. So I hope you're serving God right now. Hope you listen to this when you when you listen to it, if you listen to it, <laughs> that you're that you're truly serving God, and that you still have. A congregation of people and a pastor that still preach and teach the Word of God if not if it's not lining up and you've talked to your pastor and the people and they're of the notion oh well we need to change and put the times you need to come out from among them as I said in the, uh, the 
other night, the Lord is not coming back for a bride wearing Babylonian garments. He's coming back for a bride that's spotless, that's dressed in white raiment, that's watching and praying for him to come back. So God bless you. This is that's what the Lord has to say for today. We appreciate you listening. Uh, pray for us. We'll pray for you. Pray for church. We'll pray for your church and just all come together. You spiritual warriors, meet me on the battlefield. We'll march against the enemy together. Blessings in Christ upon each and every one of you. And uh, if you're not saved, come to the Lord before it's everlasting too late. Because we're not guaranteed another day in this life. In our life, can, we could be sitting there talking one minute. And by tomorrow, your eye could be gone. So don't let it linger. Don't let. Don't wait until it's too late. Come to the Lord while you still can, while He's calling you and drawing you to an altar of repentance. Amen. Amen. Blessings in Christ upon each and every one of you, and we will see you in the next video. Take care now.